Now what we're going to see then here at Barveni is the old way that it, it used to be done. I think there's a se seven distilleries across Scotland that have still got an operational maltings. The modern method I'll come back to later on, but it's it's the same it's the same process using different equipment with a little bit more efficiency along the way. The barley's been delivered from the farm. It's unmalted. It gets poured into these steep tanks. They hold around about eight tons. Eight tons is the quantity we're going to do in here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to spend two days soaking this barley in lukewarm water and then letting it have a dry stand. So roughly about eight hours in water, eight hours of a dry stand over to a two day period. That's going to have to happen whether we do it here on site or whether it's done off site at a professional maltsters. It's going to need to get soaked in lukewarm fresh water. And then we're going to drop it down from these steep tanks onto the concrete floor below. So what I'm going to do is take you downstairs to the, to the maltings floor, okay? <laughs> pours out at the bottom of the tanks and then what we'll do is we pile it up to around about a foot in heaps as it germinates just for efficiency's sake because there'll be another batch of course coming through there we'll gradually move it down the maltings floor over the next five to eight days as it develops as it modifies as it germinates until it's at the end of the maltings floor ready to be kilned at the end of the process so it's around about a week for what's going to happen next. And this is where it's going to germinate. While it's germinating, the, the endosperm is, convert, is, is feeding on the sugar. The enzymes are converting starch, breaking starch down into, into sugars so that the endosperm can eat it and start to grow. So it's actually going to grow <coughs> a tiny root as it's developing. Now, for a couple of reasons, we're going to turn it. We're going to turn it as it's germinating. This is to help it to um, have a more even spread of temperature. It's going to emit CO2 and it's going to warm up. So help, to help it sort of remain at an even temperature, we'll turn it two or three times a day to keep, it, keep that even temperature and also to stop it from getting entangled. As those roots grow, they'll just grow around one another and we'll have this bed of, mat, uh, of, of, of barley that we actually cannot do anything with. So we're going to keep it moving. Traditionally, you'd use a malt shovel to do that, to keep on turning it. You can imagine how labour intensive this process used to be. And we've now got a sort of motor mower that you kind of walk down here and it sort of just turns it for you. Um, if ever you've seen our expression monkey shoulder, and we've been serving monkey shoulder, we get the name of monkey shoulder from the, the affliction that a maltman would get from doing this all day, because it's a very heavy shovel and eventually they get a sort of tired, worn out shoulder that would start to droop like this and therefore they were given, it was given the name monkey shoulder. It sounds a little bit cruel for us to name a whiskey after that affliction, it used to get better. So you get taken off that duty and then it would, it would mend itself out uh, you're doing something else. So what we'll finally do with it here is sweep that now modified green malt into this trough here and then it's going to get circulated up through the barley elevators into the kiln where we can then dry it out. That takes a couple of days Now, what I'm going to do first of all is take you into the kiln itself and strange enough you can actually do this even when it's working because it's a very gentle heat that we're going to be using but as it's not working we can go in there or we can stand in the middle of it and then I can talk to you about what's going to happen inside that kiln which we wouldn't do if it was working because we get asphyxiated with smoke. Okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring that green malt up through the pipe there and spread it out across the floor again so it's about just under a, a foot in height so we've got ourselves in a layer of, of malt on here and every once in a while it will, get, it will continue to get turned so that we get an even drying. What we're going to do below is we're going to create ourselves, light up a furnace and we're going to heat up the interior in here to begin with about 45 degrees, keep it very gentle to begin with, it's going to take us a couple of days to dry the barley out. 
gradually will increase the heat until maybe we get to around about 60 degrees. So at no point are we burning this barley, we're doing it very gently. And the reason for this gentle heat is about the enzymes. Mostly about the enzymes anyway, I would say. We've still got those enzymes potentially to be active within the green malt, within that malted barley. We're going to need them for the next process, the mashing process, to convert that remaining starch into sugars. So a couple of days and it's drying out in here. Once it has dried, once we've had that time, then it's a storable barley. We've essentially held in stasis all of the qualities that it has. All that starch, all those enzymes, they're all there, held for us. And that barley will typically last a, a whole year before you start worrying about it starting to go mouldy, starting to go off.